Ayo, we made this. Ammo 7. Welcome to another episode of Big Ego Media. We've got a special guest. This one's a little bit different. He goes by the name of Steel. He's currently incarcerated right now. How you doing today, bro? I'm good, my family. My hands good still. I'm there. So, um, as we always do, we like to get to know the person, humanise them, get to know their story, not to glorify, but to understand why they're in the position they are right now and what their plans are going forward. So, talk to us, let us know where you're from and where did you grow up? Man's from, man's born in Angola. Okay. You see, like, I was only born and then moved to Congo, France, and all them places, ain't right? it? But I'm originally from Angola and I'm half Angola and half Congolese. And... Okay, when did you come to the UK? Came to the UK like back in you know, all four, like of three or three or four. Okay, how old was you? You remember? I ain't gonna lie, I don't remember properly, but um, I was young though. I ain't gonna lie, I was young. See, I got I brought here, got brought here by um, the next family, which I thought was my family. Then I got brought to my dad and I uh, met my dad for the first time here. Okay, so what area did you grow up in at the time? I grew up in Wood Green. Wood Green. Did you, for, 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 for when you touched the UK, that's where you that's where you grew up in. Yeah, but I was leave I was living in Tottenham, but I was hanging around in Wood Green basically. Okay, so I mean Tottenham is kind of renowned, and Wood Green area, Enfield area, kind of renowned for the Congolese community because there's so much people from Congo um, in that area. Do you remember growing up and meeting other people from your own country and stuff like that? Um, slightly because um, I went I went I went to care the next year here, the next two years I was in care, so I didn't really grow up with my family like that. I grew up more like with Jamaicans and that. Uh, like the soaps like that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I, didn't really, I, grew, what, I grew up in care most of the time. What led you to get grown up in care? What happened in the home? Like, my dad, I didn't know my dad. My dad didn't know me. We didn't understand each other. So when situations was happening in school and that, uh, bullying and like all the soaps, like, it was one of them things. Okay. So when you found yourself in care, how different was it in compared to living in a family home? What did you find that was different or hard about it? To be honest, it's like, it's the same for me. Like, for me, it's like, like, I, I came to a place, I was with my dad, I, I was in a place where somebody didn't understand me, I went to care, people that didn't understand me, so it was one of them things that I just had to survive, innit? The survival mode, I was just went to survival mode, innit? Okay, so what, what, what kind of things you had to do on the roads to kind of survive? Obviously, like, grad, for most of the time I was homeless and that, so like, when I was in care, I used to run away from me as well, so I'll be, I'll be sleeping in the streets and that. So it's like, I used to do stupid things and that. Like, I remember, I used to rob, like, I remember when I woke up and I, was, I used to wake up and that, I used to go Morrison and that, rob the, rob the link, the link spray to spray myself to make sure I don't stink or anything like that when I'm back in the Monday. And then I'll eat, I'll, 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 I'll rob, like, the chocolate, um, the chocolate spread and I'm bread. <laughs> and then um, young like you know what I'm trying to say that like that's that's basically what I had to do in it. Right? What what about school? Was you was you going to school at the time? Um, at that time I wasn't like I was going to school, but I was in and out of school because I was going in and out of prison. So it's like I wasn't really in school like that. Like I used to, I used to go to your, like your primary school, your six, I started, and then your seven was alright. Then your eight, I was in and out of prison. Your nine, my first week of your nine, I go permanently excluded because I was, I was keep getting sent to the unit here to mm. the, the squeezes on so they like they just had enough of me and I guess it? so what led you go to go to prison for the very first time <laughs> to be honest yeah like I was doing I was doing a lot so because I remember I was homeless now so it's like I used to be I used to chill I used to sleep in with me so it's like like I never knew I didn't understand English and or anything like that so people from the other side like, obviously, it's, I don't know if you know the the, the, the postcode beast and that, all that. So when they used to come right down, they would see me. So obviously, they would try and touch me. But I remember I didn't speak English, so I didn't understand what was going on. Mm. They used to think I was a good dream boy. So I used to get in fight, get into fights, people getting hurt, people getting hospital. I used to rob and things like that. But so another, an incident happened, which wasn't actually me who done it. But because I was, I was my name was too hot at that time, they just arrested me, innit? Okay. No. I, 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 I did, I did the name Steeler come about? <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I was a thief in it, so I was like, I used to, like, I used to, I used to just thief everything in it. Mm. So it's like, man, it, like, it was mad, because man them started as a distant thing, it was like, oh, Steeler the big thief. Like, I used to just like, Steeler the big thief, like, hey, get that thief, thieving boy, like, it was one of them jokes, innit? It's like, mm. it's like, the name just stuck with it, like, Steeler, the big thief was a joke, and then it's like, Steeler, 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 so, 
in a night job, my name ring your bells was like Steeler, innit? So, so <laughs> I mean, you know, what, you know what it means now, though. <laughs> I mean, in, 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 in regards to yourself, I watched a, a, a documentary a couple of days ago, and it's a thing that where you're kind of renowned in the Wood Green, North London area for getting into a lot of different altercations. I mean, what do you think in your mindset? pushes you into that narrative of being that person that's kind of known for being quite violent out there. Why, why do you think that happened with you? See, but this, this is the situation, yeah? Like, people don't actually understand. This is why it annoys me as well, because people like, accuse me of this, that. They say I'm violent, they say this, but people don't under, understand, yeah? When I was growing up in that, as my area, we was doing rules for one of the most hate, hate areas in North London. We had every section of North against us. Like, it was... It was, it was Man, so I was as a homeless kid, as a freshie, people used to try and pick on me, like pick on me and try and bully me and all them things. And so I just reacted to how people dealt with me. Mm. So it's like so I was dealing with my own issue around the, the area. I was dealing with my own issue around the area, and I was dealing with people that was coming to my area trying to cause problem against us. So it was one of them things. It's like well, it's either I go hard or I die. Mm. So it's like it's one of them like in the streets, yeah. People don't people. Don't, Everyone's a gangster. No one, no, no one cares about if you're a gangster. Everyone's a fucking gangster. Everyone, especially now, everyone's a fucking bad boy. So it's one of them things I had to, to survive. I had to turn myself into a monster. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I had to be like, cool, like, I know where it is. I know where I'm at. It is where it is now. So it's like, I have to, I have to go hard in it because I, I never had nothing to lose. I didn't have no family. I didn't have... I never had nothing to be honest with you. I literally had nothing to lose. So it's one of them things... I just used to do things because I didn't, I didn't, I, it's not I had a death wish, but it's like, I didn't care, in it. I didn't care, in it. So it's like, so I've got a better of most people, so inshallah I survived, innit? I mean, so, I mean, there's situations where you got the better of a lot of people, and then when I was watching the thing, it's quite a lot of people, but it's also an incident where you almost lost your life as well. I mean, did you ever fear for your own life? Um... To be honest, like not really because I didn't. It wasn't like it's not about. It's not like I don't know how to explain. It. It's like people used to try and come after me. It's like one of them things. Is like we all gonna die one day, innit? So I used to always hear like, if it's my time, it's my time, innit? So it's like I never really fear of dying. It's not like fear of dying. It's like it would be stupid for me to fear of dying. I'm not suicidal, but it's just that. I ain't gonna to leave. I didn't have no kids. I didn't have little brothers. I didn't have like I did have brother, but I, I grew up in care. So for me, it's, it was different. I didn't know my family, my blood family like that at that mm. time. So it's like I ain't gonna to lose. It's like who's, who's gonna cry for me when I die? So it's like one of them things is like, bro, if I die, it don't really matter. If I survive, I'm still going through hell anyway. So it's like it's not about death wish. It's just that uh, I don't care. I didn't really care to be honest. I don't. I, I didn't really care. I mean, so over the years, I know you said you was estranged from your family. Over the years, have you now kind of got to know your family? Have you built up a rapport with your family again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, nah, obviously, when I was growing, when I grew up, and now, obviously, I realized my little brothers, sisters, and they're all growing up, and so they are the age where, because at first I thought, cool, they were my dad, and now they, they don't need me, anything like that. Then obviously, I was naive in it. So obviously, that's when I realized I thought it was better for me to stay away from them because in the street, everyone knew me as. The guy that ain't got no weakness, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have no... That's why I never wanted to have a you at first, because I didn't want to have no weakness, because I was going hard. Mm. So, like, when I thought I didn't have responsibility, it was better for me, but then I realised, yeah, my brother needs me, my brother's missing me, he's looking for me, my sister. So it's one of them things, it's like, I have, it's my duty to be there, and so I started to get to know more my dad again, like my stepmom, all them things there, so just, just for the sake of my little brother and my sister. And, do you ever remember kind of your own particular ambition, like something you wanted to do? What did you want to become as a young person? Like, what was your goal? To be honest, yeah, I got um, I wanted to be a footballer, but also wanted to be a musician. I done I done a um a freestyle here. Now, I don't know if it's still on YouTube, but it's a freestyle of me back back here as a freshie, and everyone was laughing at me. So like like I'm busting, I'm just talking bare names and I'm bringing up bare names in the ends and that boom boom. Like, it was one of them things, I just like music, innit? I like, basically, I grew up with, like, like, in a life where, like, music, like, the gangster music was that time, innit? So, I just love the music, innit? You know what I'm mm. saying? So, I mean, you've been in, uh, so you're currently in jail. How long have you been in for? How long you got left? I've been in for, um, four years, coming up four years already. 
And uh, to be honest, obviously, I'm EDF, so I don't really know when I'm out to it. Like, it's because EDF, no one knows when I decap, things like that. So mm. right now, I'm just riding it and like doing whatever I can. It is what it is right now, you know? But with that, though, don't you see this as a risk? I know you guys are masked up. We don't know what jail you're in. But don't you see it as like, a risk that can possibly push you back? Yeah, 100%. But before I started doing this, before I actually decided to do the music thing, like, because I was doing music before, but I never really took it serious. This time, I'm actually taking it serious, cause, but before that, I had to ask myself a lot of questions. And the question is, what the fuck can they do to me? Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? They can't really do anything to me. What, put me on basic losses, whatever. I'm on that, them, I'm on them things every day anyway, so it's like they can't really do anything. I understand that, I understand that, but I'm talking from a, a, a I don't know how much older I am than you, know, I'm 36, right? So yeah. I've done eight years in jail. So I went to jail when I was 20, I come out when I was 28, right? And sometimes yeah. while we're in jail, it's like we're, we're comfortable because we've got the man name, we've got, we've got our text, we get food, we're patterning things. But I tell you what, my brother, there's nothing greater than having that freedom. And I'll tell you what, this year, this well, not this year, not like, but next year, last year, I managed to go on a holiday three times with my daughters. There's nothing, like, the world is so big. So for you, my brother, the only thing I can say to you is that music is great to do, right? But don't let it be the thing that you say, you know what, fuck it, what can they do to me? Because the world is so much bigger. That's only one advice I can kind of give to you as an older person. But what I would say though is, I know you dropped your, your, your song the other day. What made you drop that song and what's your kind of ambition to do with the music now? Like, I'm going to answer your first question to be like, I want to, first of all, I'm going to thank you for the advice. So like, I do agree with that. Like, the, like outside, obviously, obviously my things is different now. The way I'm dealing with things is different now. My ambitions is different now. So it's like, I get what you're saying. And also, I do want to come out. I do want to fix all of them things there. It's just that for at, at the moment, like the way how my life is right now, that's the reason why I can I can do this and I can do that because I've been going from job to job getting kicked out. So there's no it's not in my head to be like, cool, let me chill out. No, that it's not. I'm, it's not really that time. If it, if this, I don't go looking for trouble. But if it comes, it comes. But I am trying to do things the right way. My ambition is different. Mm -hmm. But on the music thing, I dropped that tune just to make sure people know, ah, cool, this is me. This is Steeler. You know what I'm saying? Because everyone before I dropped the tune back in the days before like oh, 11 or 10. And then obviously when I came out, I dropped the street, but I, had, I wasn't allowed to do it. So I had to wear a mask, use different names and all them things there. So it wasn't really, I wasn't really doing it properly, I was just doing it for the gang. But this time I got, I got, I got, I got a plan. I got a plan. Everything is set. Like everything is set. My manager's got a plan. He's sorting out everything. We go, we got a plan that for this whole year, this whole year is going to be mine's year, you know? Like, mm. And there's nothing that can do to stop my mm. Nothing that can do to stop my so I mean with that again like I said I grew up in an era was I'm from Peckham we used to beef the ghetto boys beef the Brixham boys as you get older right and of course there's things that's happened where people have lost their lives in regards to the gang warfare that you guys have been involved in but as you get older now is there a thing that where it's like I can't be bothered with that shit no more I'm gonna concentrate my music I'm not on this beef thing no more I see someone from a different side I don't have to go for you, you don't have to go to me, we don't want to be friends, but you know what? It is what it is. Yeah. Can you get to that mode? Yeah, but this one I'm saying, this why everyone, because it's me, everyone knows that's me. I am, I see that mode that you're talking, that's where I'm at. I know mine from Tottenham, I've got young G's from Enfield that's doing a bird right now. So, you know what I'm saying? My thing is different. Like, everyone, oh, Wood Green, boss, oh, this, that. Like, that's just a statement people start saying to you, manipulate people in his, his head, you know what I'm trying to say to you? Me, I'm trying to. I'm trying to take over, ain't it? I'm trying to take over London. That's the fact. Now, I want to be the king of North, the king of London. Oh, That's why I'm at, because I've got people on every oh, forum. Oh, I'm saying, my, my situation is my situation is different. My situation is to a lot of these people, a lot of these rappers. If you ask anyone about man, they'll tell you. My thing is the whole of London. Now, I'm trying to say to you, because I had enough of seeing man doing this, doing that, this and that. But all of them know, every single one of them boroughs know, like, there's not a lot of man that can talk to me. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But mm. on the gang thing, on the gang thing, I don't care about this. Issues. Since I had my U, uh, since I had my, I always say when I have my U, I'm gonna drop out of the bang thing. Cause when you're when you're gang banging, this youth this youth nowadays they don't know about the meaning of gang banging. When I was gang banging, I was going to jail just to catch my ops. I was, my main thing was to drop off. My main thing was to get to places, lie to them, turn them up from Tottenham, manipulate them just to see them, just to catch them, just to do things to them. And they know that. 
But I don't need to be for couples. I don't need to be Honzi. I don't need to be none of. I don't need to be none of these shoes. I know man from a lot of areas. I got brethren that's from them sides as well. You know what I'm trying to say I don't care about none of them shoes. You know what I'm saying they can't. As long as they stay on the lane, as long as man don't cross the line, because they know what happened when they cross the line the other day. They know what happens already. You know what I'm saying as long as they just stay on the lane. I'm Gucci, you know what I'm saying? But I don't really, they don't really phase me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not really, I'm not really into all of that. Um, fuck this person, fuck, I don't care about all of that. As long as they stay on the lane, my opposition is people that don't like me. My opposition is people that's trying to encapsulate me, and the people that's trying to pull me in jail for life. Feds, gods, like, I don't care if gods or not, I'll sit on anyone. Like, if you don't like me, you're my pagan. If you say something about my name, you're my pagan. If you're my pagan, I'll get you, fam. But it's not because of postcode anymore, you know what I'm saying? Right now, is about yo. Let's get this money in it. You know what I'm saying? And if you're against me, fam, I'll come and get you, fam. Simple. So in, 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 in regards to then, like um, music, then is there people that's kind of co-signing you on the outside? People from the areas and they say, yo, I'm you're looking for collaborations. Like, what's happening? Now, to be honest, yeah, right now I'm on my own shit. Obviously, I got my people. I'm gonna do collaboration with my people. Then my young G's are doing their thing and that. I got my brothers from the other side, um, from other other um of an area and that, and that's doing the thing and that. I'm just gonna do the collabs and that with people and that. I also wanna do, cause I got like, I just, don't, I just don't wanna do gang shit. I wanna do Afrobeat songs and that. Like, I wanna rep represent my people and that, like, you know what I'm saying, my roots. Okay. I wanna do like girl songs and things like that. I don't wanna be like, oh yeah, people just see me as, oh yeah, he's a violent guy. I'm just this, I'm just that. But like, you don't fucking know me, fam. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do different all things. Right, all you know right, man. That ain't ready for this album, trust me. So, you, so uh, I can hear someone in the back and say they got an album coming out, so there's a whole project you got. Man's got, man's got, um, man's got, sorry, my boy. Man's got an album coming in that. Man's got a mixtape and that coming out. I've got some couple of these songs and that. Man's got a couple of different things still. Okay. Trust me, brother. Album is a nice thing, brother. Man's got everything for everyone, man. So, with the management on the outside then, so they're kind of dealing with all the mixing, engineering, putting it out there for you, putting videos out for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. I got that. Right now, obviously, my sp- I got songs out there ready. Because like, obviously, before I release this song, I have to get everything ready just in case they come after me, which they will anyway. So I don't give a fuck. Because I got songs ready. I got the cameraman ready. I got everything, like everything my needs. Like everything's ready. My management's ready. Director's ready. Like man's got plan. The plan, they can't, the, the way I pattern everything, I pattern everything on a way where you can do whatever you want to me, but you're not going to stop the process. You know what I'm trying to say? So, like, home leave, when I do home leave, I've got to do my videos. When I do, so it's like I've got a setting where you can't stop it. You know what I'm saying? Stop mm. So, I mean, going back to yourself again, right? And going back to yeah. your history, if you could go back in time and look at your 13 year old self, what advice would you give that young man? I probably tell them like, obviously, don't change anything. As I'm gonna tell them, don't change anything or change everything. Two advice. So it's about change. Don't change anything or change everything. Now, what I say? So it's like, cause you can't change or you can't or don't do this situation because that situation helps you to get. You know what I'm saying? Say, but if you're not gonna do that situation, you can't do the others. So it's like, mm. I've changed everything. Like you, you, you what's your life? Your life, and that's all. But or just go, don't do the same thing again, innit? Yeah. That's my advice, really. Yeah. So I mean, how, how 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 does it feel then, kind of not knowing? I, I think you said EDS, kind of not knowing your release date. Does that give you, leave you in a state of confusion? I, I, how do you never get it? Yeah. That's a bit like IPP, right? See, see, for people like me as well, it's like, like you're basically telling us basically we can do whatever we want, there's nothing you can do to us, you know what I'm mm. saying? Which is not a good thing. But obviously, I'm a grown man now, so it's not like I'm going to, uh, because I, I ain't got nothing to lose, I'm just going to do this, I'm just going to do that. I'm doing this music thing because of what I want from it, you know what I'm saying? It's not that I'm doing it for because of my name or fake, because I want to be fake. No, 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 I'm fake already. I don't want the fakeness, you know what I'm saying? I want the money from it, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like... They want us to basically want to put us in a situation where, uh, cool, you know, can do whatever, but when the parole comes, we're fucked. Mm. So, right now, it's that, like, cool, I just do whatever, but I know the plans. I'm making sure I'm doing my courses and I do make sure I do everything the right way as well. I make sure like, uh, like, I work with them at the same time as well, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, although I don't know, what, I don't know when I'm going to be released or whatever, I'm still doing what I need to do. So, when that time comes, I'm ready for it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, what I, mean, what I say that is, well, that I would be. I wouldn't be a good person if I kind of didn't warn you of this video can go viral, right? So I would want you guys to understand that 
I've got police officers and prison officers who watch my show. So I wouldn't want to ever put you in a predicament where I could be like, yes, man, this is going to get bare views and that's all I care about. But it's not about that. It's about you understanding also the risk of, okay, I'm going to put myself out there. There might be a prison officer who watches it and goes, I recognise that voice. So those are the sort of things you kind of have to kind of navigate and think about. Because like I said, right, yeah. that eight years in jail was shit for me, right? But I'll tell you what, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because it made me pattern up. And when I came out, right, I became legit and I saw more money on road being legit than I ever did being on road, doing road stuff, right? So I, I say this also to other people in the background as well. It's like, I don't know how long everyone's got left, kind of, but there is so much money in being legitimate just that nobody used to teach us. But if, when you guys come out, you see how the culture has changed. Black people now get opportunities. Black people now are in the industry, music industry, film industry. There's so much things to do, right? It's up to you guys now how you want to understand it because there's no money in gangbanging anymore. There's no money in gangbanging. Yeah. Everyone's changing their mindset. So that's the best advice I can give to you guys. And of course, if music is the angle that you want to, do your music. But if you've got also a lot of young G's that respect you, get into the management thing. Because the management yeah. thing is... You're just sitting there, connecting the dots, networking, and artists are there, and you're getting your 20%, and a lot of managers are now raking it in as well. That's the yeah. advice I can kind of give you. What would you want people to kind of get from this message, from this interview? What, what's the message that you want people to understand? I want people to stop judging me because of my past, or to just stop judging me to think, oh, yeah, they know me. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like, like you say, there's documentary saying I'm this, this, that, that, this. But like you say, when you ask me, and I do appreciate it, so ask me why I was doing certain things, you know what I'm saying? So you know why I was doing certain things, you know what I'm saying? I don't want him to think, oh yeah, man's just doing music just for the sake of it. Man's just doing music, but man's got, man's got family to feed, you know what I'm trying to say to you? Man's got mouth to feed, and plus as well, what's pissing me off is, only fucking with Green is doing it properly, you know what I'm trying to say to you? And to him now, like, like my version hits and my hit on that coming out doing his thing as well, but now, you go, gee, money and now in, in jail and now, but he's supposed to be gone from this. Like, niggas need to start respecting Wood Green's fucking name on this music oh. thing. Because, end of the day... Oh, uh, gee, money's back in jail. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, man's pissed off. At the end of the day, he's hard. He was one of my favourite rappers growing up, like, him and 50 Cent. So it's like, my thing is that, bro, like, we was caught up in this, in, in this gang thing. All we knew was gang, 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 and then all of that. You know what I'm saying? That's how my... When I chat to the young dude, my first thing I tell him, yo, listen, make your money. Because see me personally, I don't need a bad boy around me no more. Because at the end of the day, I'm enough purpose. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need no one to be, oh yeah, I need certain oh, purpose. I need people to make money. I need you know, to do what's oh. right. But at the end of the day, when you don't make it, that's when you can help me. I don't want people next door to me and banging out with me. I can bang out myself. I've been doing this for years. Because, yeah, because, uh, I mean, what I'll say definitely in regards to Wood Green, because I've done an interview with Blacks. I don't know if you saw that one yeah, yeah, yeah. From, Wood, uh, from Wood Green. I saw that one, yeah. And I was kind of explaining at the time as well, I done an interview with him that. Apart from G Money, there wasn't you. Wood Green never really took the helm. No one really pushed it and yeah. and took it there. If you look, if you look at sort of like Edmonton, they had like Tion Wayne representing, and you had East uh, Tottenham. You had like Heady One, and your horns, and you had uh, most that. So Wood Green, there wasn't really that one person to take that helm. Why do you think that was? Yeah, but let me let me explain this. So this is the reason why. Uh, you see, Edmonton, obviously the young ones, they and they obviously they might look for goals as well. You know what I'm trying to say to you, but. My generation, Edmund, most of them is fuck with Ox anyway. Mm. He's the Ox. So it's like, if Edmund, if Edmund don't ride out, yeah, they come. Some of them, like, especially my generation, those come. No one's going to ride out them. Us, man, if the one side of Tottenham is riding out, the other side is riding out. If the whole of Tottenham is riding out, Hose is riding out, Enfield is riding out, anything. So it's like, we was on we was on this, like, we didn't have the choice. We didn't, we didn't have time to be going studios and this thing. Man, on the way to studio, we see someone, Someone try to touch us, we do something, we end up in jail. So we never had that opportunity where our uh, cool can just chill out, do this music thing, boom, boom. Now, anytime G man try to do the music thing, they try to put the feds and I try to shut him down. Like man try to do the music thing, they send him in jail. Like it's it's, it's ridiculous and that. like it's like we didn't have a chance. We didn't have a chance and then we didn't have a chance and but so we got caught up into caught up into this thing. If Tottenham and like, Tottenham, if 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 them when far like farm or any of them guys there, when they start doing the music thing, they don't have to worry about someone right now and then because we're probably too busy dealing with MTK. We're dealing with, don't get, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't care about this, the music no more, but that's what man was doing, in it? So it's like, they man are cool. They can chill out and do the music thing. We ain't got, we didn't have time for all that music thing, but like, people were trying to kill us. 
like, like, you know what I'm saying? And this is why, the reason why we never lost anyone in 2018. So it's like, we're Gucci, fam. We're Gucci, baby. We're Gucci. Like, we didn't have a chance, you know what I'm saying? Sure, fam. Oh, yeah. Sure. What, what's, what's your kind of, your, your, your hopes, ambition for 2023? It's a new year. It's a new start. What's your hopes for this year? Oh, hold your money. 2023? Man, yes, and there's no one that can stop me. Yeah, I'm huh? taking over. When I say I'm taking over, I'm taking. See the music thing, fam? Bro, man, that I know get on my way. Because see this, all of this as well, music in the streets doing this. Because a lot of people as well, this music. And don't get it twisted. Man's not like, oh, yeah, man's doing this as a wood green thing. Man's doing it as a stealer thing. You know what I'm saying? I represent the area, but man's doing it as a meeting. Because a lot of man was hating. A lot of man, even people on my own ends. You know what I'm saying? A lot of man do not get it twisted, fam. You see this shit, fam? I don't get on my way, but anyone get on my way, fam, I chew you like my pain, fam. Oh, oh, There's oh, none oh, of this or oh, talking, oh, talking in um, in what to call or talking um getting on people on, on, on the fucking industry shit. But man's the road, you man's the gang thing, bro. Don't talk my name, don't stop man getting bread, fam. But bro, I come after man, simple, bro. You're gonna jail man, yeah, fam. Come on, bro. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. Any last message there to the fans out there then? I know I see it is the, the the song was released on press play. I think the lot when I checked it had like twelve K views, probably got much more than that now. Like mad, it's mad. I ain't gonna lie, it's feeling better than I thought because obviously I didn't really think too tough about this one. I just wanted to throw it out there to show up one for the next one, it's called War. That one is gonna be a mad thing. Jeez. The other one is well, ready for bro, number two. Man, ready for what's coming. Ready, ready I promise for you, I promise you will be like, yo, what's coming? It's mad. But the fans, I want to appreciate you guys. I got fans before I even started, they uh, came back on the music team, they were telling me, come, on, come back on the music, the Turkish show, and the Bain. There's a lot, I've got a lot of fans that broke. So I want to appreciate you guys. I want to thank you for supporting, man, and everything as well. I want to thank as well the UK blogs and all them type of blogs and that's been supporting, man. And I want to thank you as well for giving me this interview and that show. Well, and, like, and my advice to you little young G's that's doing the music team, fam, do your fucking thing. Don't listen to this dumb old G's that's telling you, oh, go and shoot this, go and shoot that. But they ain't fucking doing that, fam. Go and make your money, go and make your music and that. Bro, the music is fucking hard. You know the project that my nigga that calls down. All right, say no more, say no more. That there, guys, was a big ego media interview, and that there was Steeler. Big up. Come on. Shout out Bobby Cassandra. Come on, man. Shout out Bobby. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it.